So financial statements problem six. This is going to be a comprehensive question that leads us to cash flow from assets. So you're given the following information about Hardy Holders. You can see here a 2019 income statement and balance sheet. So you're to calculate the following. What is the change in networking capital from 2018 to 2019? What is the amount of the net capital spending for 2019? What is the operating cash flow? Again, same year. And what is the cash flow from assets? And then we go and move on to what is the amount of net new borrowing for 2019? What is the cash flow to creditors? What is the amount of dividends paid? And what is the cash flow to stockholders? All for 2019. We need to understand and interpret the financial accounts and remember also the elements involved in calculating the cash flow from assets. So let's take a look at each of those questions from A to H, I believe it was. First of all, the net change in net working capital. We have to know that working capital is calculated as current assets minus current liabilities. The net capital spending is simply the spending or the investment in, in fixed assets. And we have to keep one thing in mind, depreciation. So it's not going to simply be the difference in fixed net fixed assets from one year to the next. Operating cash flow, we have to remember that operating cash flow is EBIT plus depreciation minus taxes, which is again to be just to remind you, not the same as cash flow from operations on a cash flow statement. There are there's similar, but there's slight differences that are critical to keep in mind. Then we have the cash flow from assets, which are comprised of the three parts that we calculate above there, in fact. That's the operating cash flow minus the networking capital and minus the net capital spending. Net new borrowing is simply the difference in the debt. And to calculate the cash flow to creditors, we have to consider these uh, two places that we can look at it. One is due to the net new borrowing, and the other one is in the income statement, simply the payment to, uh, of interest. Dividends paid, if we're not given that information directly, which is the case here, we can calculate that given uh, the that income statement and the balance sheet. And in fact, we have this equation, or rather this identity, the net income, goes into either dividends and whatever isn't goes into addition to the retained earnings that you see in the balance sheet. So those are the two places where the net income can go to. That's why we would be able to calculate the dividends. And the cash flow to shareholders or stockholders is basically we're looking at the dividends and any changes, money received from new shares. And we're going to talk about that when, uh, on, when we get to H. <clears throat> now let's take a look at the network change in networking capital. So networking capital is the current assets and the current liabilities. So we need to identify the current assets. Well, we have here, we have cash, we have accounts receivables, we have inventory, and this total, that looks right. And accounts payable here on the current liabilities and other short-term liabilities, here we have a total. So these totals, actually, we could rename current assets and current liabilities. So simply, the difference between the two would be our networking capital. So networking capital for uh, 2019 is this 11,000 uh, minus 2,400. That gives us our amount. And similarly for 2018, so the difference between the two is $702. Now let's move on to net capital spending. <clears throat> As I mentioned, it's uh, not just the difference in fixed assets, but it starts off that way. So we look for the amount of uh, fixed assets. There we have our 4,488 from 4,080. So we keep that in mind. And now we have to consider the effect of depreciation. So here we have the depreciation on the income statement. And now, once we have that, we would... <coughs> Excuse me. So let's figure out if there's an equation for it, which is straightforward, but let's figure it out anyway. Imagine what the, would the net fixed assets have been or would be if there were no none bought or sold during the year. In other words, during the entire year 2019. 
So we'd have we'd start the year with the 4,080 from the tw year 2018, and then we'd have depreciation, which would give us the end value, as we can see here, of 2,580. But since the actual value is 4,488, that difference here tells us how much was actually spent. And that is our net capital spending. So the net capital spending is the fixed assets at the end of 2019, which is 4488, minus 2580, which of course is the beginning of 2019 minus depreciation. Now remember the fixed assets beginning of 2019 are the fixed assets end of 2018. So that gives us how, how the calculation, we end up with 1,908. Now for the operating cash flow, we just look at the income statement. We have here EBIT, as you can see, EBIT depreciation and taxes highlighted. And we solve that, gives us a 9,700. And now we do the cash flow from assets, which as we know, is going to use the answers to parts A to C that we just calculated. So it's equal to the operating cash flow, that's the 9,700, minus the change in net working capital and minus the net capital spending, so those are the other two, and that gives us 7,090. Now we also want to remember that cash flow from assets are, is where do the, this, we did the derivation of the cash flow from assets. Where does it come from? But where does it go to? That's the cash flow goes to the creditors and the stockholders. So cash flow to debt and equity. Now we're going to look at it from the other point of view, from the liability side. So we start with calculating the net new borrowing for 2019 and the cash flow to creditors. Now the net new borrowing is simply the change in debt. Uh, in some cases, we don't consider things such as overdraft, um, which are on the short term or, a, or a current liability side, but uh, we don't have any in this example, so it's not such a big deal. It's all about the long term debt, which we can see here. And the net new borrowing, therefore, is a the difference in there. That's $355. Now, the net new borrowing increasing by $355 means that. Uh, the company has received uh, cash from the share, from the uh, creditors, not paid to creditors. So the cash flow to creditors is the amount of interest paid to them and minus the net new borrowing. Now the interest paid is on the income statement here. We have 500 as the interest expense. And so we now simply calculate as 500 minus now the amount received for the net new borrowing, which is $145. Now, what is the amount of dividends paid? As mentioned, we don't have the dividends uh, shown directly, but we can figure it out indirectly. We're using the fact that the dividends are paid out of the earnings of the company, so that's the net income. And where does it go to? We're going to see that in the retained earnings. So the rest of the earnings that are not paid as dividends are kept and they add to the retained earnings. So the difference here is between the retained earnings, which is the total retained earnings as of the end of 2018 versus the total of retained earnings as of the end of 2019 is coming from this the net income of the year. So we use these two and the net income is the dividends plus the change in retained earnings. So we turn it around, calculate the dividends to be net income minus the change in retained earnings. And we can see here that 7,700 minus the 2753 and the difference between that and 2368. So 7,315 is how much we paid in dividends. So that's part one that we need to do to calculate cash flow of stockholders. Then we have the other part, which we have to see if the stockholders paid in any new money into the company. So the cash flow to stockholders is the amount pay of dividends paid to them, which we just calculated, minus net new money received from them through new share issuance. Now we can see that now it would not be in the retained earnings section because retained earnings is not a cash flow to or from the stockholders. It's basically the difference, or, or rather it's what's kept by the company out of its own earnings. However, the paid in capital is another story. So 
new money can be seen as a change in the amount of paid in capital. So here we see it, the difference between the 4070 and the 3700. And that means the paid in capital is 370. So that means we received, the company received 370 from the shareholders and paid uh, 7,315 to the shareholders. So the net amount paid was the difference there. So it's 6,945. So we've answered all the, pro the questions, but let's recall. From D, we calculated the cash flow from assets based on the identity equals EBIT plus depreciation minus tax. And that was the answer was 7,090. Now from F, we calculated the cash flow to creditors is $145. From, from H, we calculated the cash flow to stockholders is 6,945. So now we can calculate the cash flow from assets using the identity, cash flow to creditors plus cash flow to stockholders, and that we add those two up and we get the same number. So we have confirmed the identity, that fact that uh, cash flow from assets is the same both ways we calculated. That's it, and thanks for your attention. Hopefully that helped.